It's widely considered one of the most exciting days during the college football season. National Signing Day has arrived. Here at Jones C. Edwards Stadium, I'm your host, Jake Griffith. Thanks for joining us as a part of the 2020 Marshall Signing Day special here on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook Watch. Over the course of our two-part program today, we'll bring you all the information you need to know about Marshall's 2020 recruiting class, including a sit-down with head coach Doc Holliday and his assistant coaches. In total, 20 young men will come run with the Thundering Herd in this stadium next season. But before we do our deep dive into Marshall's recruiting class, it would only be appropriate to take a look back at what was in 2019. Led by sophomore running back Brendan Knox, Marshall finished 2019 with another winning record under head coach Doc Holliday. The Thundering Herd went 8-5 and five in the regular season overall and earned a trip back to Tampa to take part in the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. The aforementioned Knox used his sophomore season to cement his place amongst the great backs in Marshall football history. Knox finished the season with over 1,300 rushing yards, ranked 16th nationally, and was one of 20 running backs in the nation to rush for over 1,200 yards. On the defensive side of things, Marshall was strong again, in spite of being on their second defensive coordinator in as many seasons. The Thundering Herd finished top 50 nationally in a bevy of statistical categories, including 28th in the nation in total sacks. That was what was. Let's take a look now at what could be as we meet the signees for Marshall. On screen now the full list of the 20 total players that signed with Doc Holliday and his coaching staff. 17 signed during the early signing day period. Number one, uh, as you mentioned, every season is exciting, but this just happens to be the most exciting because it is the 50th anniversary of the crash. And a lot of things are going to happen this year to honor those, those people that died in that crash. But we're excited. You know, we got the team MVP coming back, uh, Conference USA MVP and Brandon Knox at, at tailback. Uh, got about nine to ten guys, starters back on offense, so we're excited about that group. And got some young players that we think need to step up and, and get better. Well, I just, number one is leadership. You know, he, gets, he provides such great leadership for our football team. You know, our entire offensive line is back. We lose Levi, of course, which will be a big loss, but the rest of those guys are back along with a couple tight ends. So, yeah, you know, I think the thing he'll bring to us is just his toughness, uh, the way he goes to work every day. And, uh, you know, our guys, uh, anytime what great leaders do is they set standards and bring everybody up around them. And he does that as, as a player. Well, I think, number one, I thought, I thought we met our needs. You know, and, and recruiting changed, you know, with all this portal thing going out there and all those kind of things. I think you'd be remiss not to hold three or four scholarships back at this point uh, to try to meet some needs possibly down the road. So. You know, and I know a lot, most of the people I talk to are now are now a part of all that because just the numbers that are happening with this portal and the people that are going in. So I felt like we knew we had to get in and we had to get a little older at the uh, defensive back position, also the linebacker position. I thought we did that, uh, signed some good young offensive linemen that will help us down the road when we lose these seniors here this coming year. So, again, thought we met our needs, uh, excited to where they are. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't get hung up on stars. I get hung up on guys that got big old – hearts and love football and are good players. I think we met those needs. Yeah, offensive side of the class, you know, we filled the needs that we need to fill. We got a couple receivers that can run with some speed, which was a big uh, concern of ours. Um, obviously, you got to take the one quarterback that we feel really good about, tall, long, uh, pretty quarterback who has some run ability, going to be a big body kid, filled in some, some young offensive line positions of, of some nasty in a good way, nasty human beings, um, you know, and got, got some tight ends in in the younger class, our tight end Room's uh, older class right now, so we've got some young guys in, in that class that we, we feel can help us with some depth right now, and we'll step in once the, once the older guys go. So I'm excited about this class, excited about what they bring. And, you know, the good thing nowadays is a lot of those guys are already here, already here working out with our guys, that will, you know, all that type of stuff. So that's a huge part of how recruiting has, uh, has changed. Eli, you know, Eli is what you look for in a quarterback. He's 6'6", 205 pounds right now. He'll be a 225, 230-pound kid. Uh, can make every single throw there is. Um, tough son of a gun, um, you know, not that, you know, prima donna quarterback who, you know, isn't going to get dirty. He's going to go in and get dirty for us, and he's going to do athletic enough to do some of the run stuff, big enough to do some of the power run stuff at the quarterback position, which you need to have in the game today. Um, so we're excited about him. You know, he has the intangibles, which is what you look for in the quarterback room. And he's from right around the corner. He's from right down the road, which was, uh, you know, we had him at camp. We had him in person. And, uh, you know, we're excited about what he brings to the table. Long guy, athletic guy, um, you know, quick, fast, has it all. You know, Texas kid, uh, older kid from a, from a junior college. Um, so, you know, we're, we're excited about getting him here in the summertime. Um, but, you know, he's going to be able to add some immediate depth and, and push some guys in that room, you know, a, a position we want to 
be able to utilize more this year than we did this past year, obviously. Um, but he's a guy who can come in and, and hopefully help us out right away. But he's a he's a speed guy. He's a quick guy. He's an elusive guy. And like I said, he's a Texas guy. So, you know, he loves himself some ball. EJ's here on campus already. Um, you know, he was a prep school kid, so he's a, a year removed from college. So again, I mean, I'm sorry, year removed from high school. So that, you know, allows him to be uh, a year more mature. So he's on campus right now. He's a speed guy as well, which is something we wanted to fill in that receiver class this, uh, this signing period with, with these two guys we have. Um, he reminds me a lot of, of Brock uh, Thompson as far as, uh, you know, mentality and, and maturity of that and, and toughness of that type of situation. So, you know, again, he's another guy that we expect to push some depth and, and push some guys in the upper class and, and, you know, continue to develop that receiver room. Yeah, JJ, in-state guy, just a just a talent, just a good football player. You know, that's the type of kid that can play a number of positions for us, and that's what you look for in a running back room. You know, a guy that can can run the ball, that can that can go and catch the ball, that's tough enough to pick up the pass protection, all that type of stuff. You know, we're uh, we're young and we're deep in that running back room. Obviously, we're very good in that running back room. He's going to fit in there, no problem, and and uh, be you know be a good player for us. You know what? It, it clears the whole picture up and forces guys to make some. Uh, some some decisions and stick to them. You know, you know, back in the day before this first signing period, this whole you know last three four weeks five weeks is was spent babysitting guys and holding on to guys and you know, guys switching their commitment ten you know five ten times throughout. You know, so right now it allows you to clear things up. It forces you uh, you know in spring recruiting to get ahead of the game on that type of stuff and and uh, and get on top of guys. But you're allowed to bring them up in season. You're allowed to get them signed. And the big thing, like you know, most of the guys I mentioned there are already here on campus. To me, that's one of the huge things that we can get them on campus. They can go through their spring ball, and guys like Brock Thompson, who did that for us last year, were able to step in as a true freshman and, and play some serious minutes for us. So it's almost Grant Wells did last year. You know, that's what Eli's doing this year, quarterback. So to me, it's almost as if they're a year in by the time we get to fall camp. Thanks for joining us as a part of the 2020 Marshall Signing Day Special here on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook Watch. On screen now the full list of the 20 total players that signed with Doc Holliday and his coaching staff. 17 signed during the early signing day period. Well, I think anytime you, you can bring back some experience on the offense and defensive lines, you know, the better off you're going to be. It's very difficult to play uh, on either side of the line of scrimmage as a young guy, so the older you are at those two positions, the better off you should be uh, through because of their development and the time it takes to develop those guys into being good players. And you're right, we do have five or six, seven guys that have played a lot of football at Marshall, and we're really excited about them. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. His brother, it all started, his brother played with my oldest son at Carson Newman in baseball, so I knew the family for an extended period of time. And he's from a great high school program there in Tennessee and Greenville. They've played for... I think three out of the last four state championships, a real tough kid, uh, played multiple positions, actually played on defense. And one of the things that really intrigued me about him was his defensive line play. Uh, but uh, he's going to play offensive line for a center guard type guy. One of the things that a lot of people don't know about him is he's 17 years old. He will not even be 18 years old until he's been in college almost a year. And he just turned 17. Uh, so he is going to be one of the youngest people probably at Marshall University, and definitely be the youngest player on our football team. His dad played at Memphis, uh, so there's some bloodlines there in terms of uh, his dad playing football at Memphis. Uh, he's a kid that we, uh, it's from a really good high school program where Jackson White played uh, in Gainesville High School. Uh, he's been well coached. Um, they've had, I think they had ended up having three O-linemen on their team go Division I. So, uh, so uh, uh, he played for a very good high school offensive line coach, and uh, we're really excited about his upside. Um, he's already up to 297 pounds. Was one, of the, one of the things that I, I liked about him was that he was a basketball guy that was not just a basketball guy. This guy was a productive basketball player, and he has decided not to play his senior year uh, to get ready for college, but he was he played basketball for three years at Gainesville High School. Well, I think it, I think it's it's always a question that we ask of every player that we recruit: is do you do any other things? Do you play basketball? Do you play baseball? Wrestle? Track and field? What is it? And I think the kid, more kids that play more sports, 
uh, I think, develop differently than sports-specific guys. Not saying sports-specific guys are not the answer, but I have found that uh, those kids that play multiple sports adapt a little bit easier. That's really changed it uh, a lot. Uh, you know, we've had to do more visits during the season. Uh, the, the process has sped up. Um, it's been good for us. I think it's a, it's a good thing for, for us here at Marshall. Um, we can kind of get the guys that want to come. We can kind of clear the deck, so to speak, with them, get them off the table, uh, get, them, get them signed. They know where they're going and, and kind of get everything set. And then you figure out kind of who's left and what, what other needs do we have here at the end. And so then on the second signing period, you can kind of hone in on that. And you sign a lot less guys, you know, in that, in that second go around now. I think it was big for us on the back end of our defense. Uh, you know, we, we lost a couple of linebackers, uh, lost two corners. Uh, so we needed to, to build our numbers back at linebacker and on the back end. And I think we did that, uh, signed three mid-year guys at linebacker that are here now with us. Uh, so they're actually going through off season. That's been a huge plus, uh, one of them a grad transfer. So we added some depth at linebacker, which I felt like we needed. And then on the back end, you know, we had to get, uh, you know, we got a corner in here at mid-year, a junior college player, uh, got a couple, signed a couple high school corners. We felt like we needed to address that need, losing uh, carry on and Chris off of last year's team. So um, we got Kalen Roach, you know, signed up, uh, you know, today. And so um, hopefully those guys give us the added depth that we need as we move through spring ball and into August. It's critical um, because they get to go through your off-season program, so they really get accustomed to the guys on the team. You know, I've always said, Jake, that your your 2020 team starts when the calendar turns. So the more pieces you can add early in the calendar, uh, the better it is for your 2020 team. And so those guys are critical. Then they can bleed right into spring ball. They can start learning the defense, offense. So when they get into summer conditioning, when they're when they're somewhat on their own, they, they can make a lot more progress as they move through the summer. So it's real critical that we get some guys in here at mid-year, especially older guys, and I think that's where, where we really helped ourselves at linebacker. Yeah, that's kind of talked around, it's kind of talked about year-round around here. You know, we make a big deal out of it. A lot of, a lot of kids you recruit have seen the movie. That's kind of their draw uh, to the university. So uh, it's pretty much a year-round thing for us. It really culminates, you know, in November when we get to that game. but. It's something that we do the cemetery run in the summer, so you hit it again at that point. So I think it's just really critical to, to who we are and, and kind of our purpose and elevating our jersey and, and things like that. So kids, we talk about it a lot around here. That'll do it for the 2020 Marshall Signing Day special. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us on YouTube, Facebook Watch, and IGTV. A reminder that for ticketing needs or information, you can call the Marshall Ticket Office at 800 The Herd or visit the Tickets tab on HerdZone.com. We hope to see you at Jones C. Edwards Stadium next season. <laughs>